Hey everybody, um, it's been a couple days since I got home from that road trip, uh, those videos that I was doing about the road trip. Um, I would have recorded, uh, of course at the end there you notice I was driving it, well I, well, I didn't notice because I didn't have the camera mounted the right way. Um, I had a pretty cheap setup, so I didn't uh, have, um, didn't really have it the way I was uh, hoping to have it recording. Uh, as you could tell, I was using a Windows phone with a really horribly cheap <laughs> um, setup um, on the way there, so you couldn't really see anything, any any place I was driving to. But I uh, I was driving into Charleston, West Virginia, and uh, gotta say it was very pretty, very very cute little town. Well, it's a city. Yeah, it's one little piece, slice of civilization amongst the, uh, the Appalachian forests. Uh, I'd like to go back there someday. Maybe spend a couple days there, fully explore it. Not that there's much to explore, because like I said, it's it's just a little bit bigger than, you know, a, a tiny town. But, um, it seems, seems like it's got a lot of good character behind it. Uh, it's a very, very pretty town. Doesn't seem like it has a lot to offer, but I think there's, I think it does have something behind the uh, scenes there. Um, right now I'm recording this on Twitch. I'm playing uh, the Ubisoft game Crew. Uh, I figure which is fitting because this was pretty much the game that made me want to get my driver's license to begin with. and uh, Well, one of the reasons I wanted to get my driver's license. So I figure uh, I'll cap off that little series of vlogs that I was doing while playing this. Um, Maybe kind of do a recap, sort of, of my road trip while I talk to you guys. Well, I talk to you, but I'll post this on YouTube later, obviously. Uh, anyway, the reason I didn't record anything between Charleston and coming home back to my hometown of Baltimore was because the duct tape on the dashboard uh, eventually, <laughs> eventually melted in the hot sun, and. Uh, I was, at that point, I was, I just wanted to get the hell home, and I didn't, uh, take the time to, uh, you know, duct tape the setup back to, to the way I had it. I actually, I actually set all that up, um, before I left Philadelphia, uh, at the end of day, tr day two of the trip, but I decided to, uh, just, I, I was like, how the hell with it, I'm not, no one's, no one's interested in anything I'm saying, so... That's why I didn't record anything between Charleston and, and uh, Baltimore, especially the fact that uh, everything is, uh, the roads were just so damn windy and, and very, very tough on my uh, 1999 Toyota Corolla that uh, I was too busy trying to just protect the engine and, and, and regulate how I was just trying to drive my way through the uh, mountains of Western Maryland in West Virginia, Eastern West Virginia, that uh, I didn't have time to really like concentrate on saying anything useful anyhow. But um, yeah, I know I got a little emotional there towards the end of uh, the Charleston part of the vlogs, and um, really looking looking back, it doesn't just what I'm doing here doesn't even really compare to uh, to that in any way. Being on the open road really, really clears your mind. And it, um, it, there's really nothing like it. Even though this is a pretty good game, I like it. I like the fact that you got the United States to explore and everything, but, um, can't wait for the, tr for the crew too. I just, which I just signed up for the open beta for. Can't wait to see what that's going to be like, but, um, yeah, this is this is nothing like being out there on the open road, driving along Route 70 at 80 miles an hour. Although this car here, this uh, I think it's a 2011 Ford GT Mustang, is probably the ideal road trip car. I can tell you for a fact that that 1999 Toyota Corolla did did its job and it did a damn good job of it. The only problem with it was uh, I almost killed it driving over the mountains the of eastern West Virginia and uh, western Maryland because the mountains are pretty damn steep there 
and I noticed that with the highways, uh, when it comes to the Appalachians, there was different ways depending on what state you were, you know, what state you're in, that they decided to uh, construct the highways. Here in Pennsylvania, they just decided, okay, well let's just build tunnels through everything, which is cool. I like going through tunnels; they're they're pretty neat. Uh, some of them are a little longer than others, from what I hear. I just went through the short ones. Um, then uh, I also noticed Kentucky. What the way they do in Kentucky is they just uh, they took one of those big claw machine. I mean, not claw machines. Uh, you know, those big Ferris wheel things that I was trying to remember the name of, and I still haven't googled what the hell they are. And they just dug through the mountains. They just dug tr trenches through the mountains. I know what the hell with it. Let's just dynamite the mountains and dig trenches through them and just build the highways through the mountains without making a tunnel, which is also neat. Uh, when you get to West Virginia, the uh, and I noticed this on my way in Charleston uh, and on my way out of West Virginia, they just kind of built the highways around the mountains. They just very windy, better slow down to 60 miles an hour when you come to the turns type kind of uh, kind of roads. They just kind of go all around the mountains. Maryland, however, unfortunately for my car, uh, they like to. They, when they built the highways, they decided, well, that eh, fuck it. Let's just let's just build over the mountains. We'll let them figure out the rest. They just build over the mountains. So every single damn mountain you come across, and every one of them has a name to it. Uh, you come across it, and it, you have to. You know, a couple a couple points, I was struggling to just keep 65 miles an hour while going up these mountains. And I think that's what was a little rough on my car. Uh, plus, like I said, it's a 1999 Corolla. So it's almost 20 years old. It's almost historic. Um, but the thing about it is that it, it has an oil burn problem. I think I mentioned this uh, sometime between Philly and Columbus or I might have mentioned it between Columbus and, and uh, Chicago but it, it burns a little bit of oil according to my father who knows the car back and front and um, I guess I guess you can say it's not really my car or I guess you can say I've earned the right to call it my car since I've driven it 1200 miles and I haven't died I almost died a couple times during the trip but uh, you know it's uh, not, nothing really big you know, you, you, you saw it in the video. I just kind of drove through a tornado, basically. Well, not through, literally through one when I was in Indiana. And uh, almost got crushed by a semi on my way to Columbus. Somewhere along the, uh, somewhere along, uh, the uh, highways of uh, Ohio. And um, it's fucking truckers sometimes. They're just, they're just, they don't give a shit. And, uh, of course, in Chicago a couple times, the people there, they're, they're insane when it comes to driving on the highways. Uh, this guy in an SUV, he almost took me off the road while I was making my way into town. And there was this little bitch in a uh, in another Toyota, late, later model Toyota, uh, Prius. She was driving like a fucking maniac. And uh, she almost uh, sideswiped me while she was trying to make her way through a little bit of traffic in uh, western Maryland. But other than that, I, I, everything worked out. But the problem here was that... Uh, my father says that the Toyota burns a little bit of oil, and it does. It burns a little bit of oil. I'm going back and forth to work in it. Almost killed somebody back there. Um, by the way, I never actually almost ran over anybody. I almost died a couple times, but no one ever died by me, just to be clear on that. Um, but yeah, it does burn a little bit of oil, but uh, hell, when you're driving 80 miles an hour, or I don't know, 80% of the road trip, going 1,200 miles, a little bit of oil adds up to a whole hell of a lot. And the oil uh, pan in, in the car is uh, five quarts. So every day I checked the oil, I pulled the dipstick out of the engine before I left, because you gotta, you gotta do it when the engine's cool. You can't just do it right after you've done a long trip, because the oil's like all over the place inside the engine. It doesn't give you an accurate, uh, you know, a depiction of what, of how much oil you got in there. So you check the dipstick, and I was like, well, it came up to the little second nub, and I thought, oh, okay, this is good. Oh, okay, it, it, looked, a little, it looked a little fried. It looked a little bit like the whole burning oil thing was like, kind of like a French fryer. You know, you put oil in a French fryer, and after a while it gets kind of black. It's not exactly pure oil anymore. Well, I didn't find out until I got back home to Baltimore that I had pretty much burned all of the oil 
as it evaporated all the oil inside that oil pan. And I was lucky to have made it home without the car breaking down 300 miles away from home. And uh, turns out I had burned all the oil in it because the oil lights started coming on sometime around uh, Cumberland, Cumberland, Maryland, which is a really nice town. I wish I had a chance to stop in there and check it out. But uh, around Cumberland, the oil engine, uh, light started to turn on just when I was going under uh, 30 miles an hour. And the thing about that is that the faster you're going in a car, the more the oil pumps up into the system. So the faster you're going, the less likely you'll see that check oil light. And uh, of course, unfortunately, when you get back to Baltimore, everything slows to a fucking crawl in Baltimore because everybody doesn't know how to help. You know, everything's 25 miles an hour. Uh, of course, in my case, I take that as 35 miles an hour because, like I said before, I go 10 miles over the limit. And, um, and yeah, it's, it, I just had to slow down to a crawl around to like 35 miles an hour. And every red light I stopped at, I was biting my nails because I was like, ah, shit, I'm not going to make it home because this car is going to crack any moment. The oil light's on, things going to shut off. But luckily, thank God. We got reports of a mobile shit. felon in the area. Luckily, <laughs> that was not the case. I made it home, and uh, when we got home, I, uh, well, my dad ended up putting in uh, three bottles of Penn's oil, no, three, three and a half bottles of Penn's oil to fill the oil back up in the fucking car. <laughs> See, the thing is here, uh, the communication is never 100% between me and him. Uh, I guess that's how it is for most fathers and sons. It's probably not a good way for me to mention it since yesterday was Father's Day, but... Yeah, when it comes to communicating, I told him when I was in Columbus, which at this point would kind of be here in the overall trip, uh, I told him that the oil didn't didn't quite look right to me, you know, and, and he was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, well, looking back, yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't fine because I ended up burning out half the fucking oil at that point, apparently, in the car, and I didn't know what the problem was. So, uh, at, before I left Chicago, I ended up pouring one of the... Because I always keep two bottles of benzene in the trunk, you know, because of the whole oil burning thing that I'm talking about. And I put the, uh, I put the bottle in there, the whole bottle in there, and, uh, yeah, it, it... I thought, well, hey, what the, thank God I did, because if I hadn't, I probably would have broke down sometime around West Virginia or in Kentucky somewhere. I mean, I got AAA... But that still kind of puts a damper on the whole fucking road trip when you got to stop and wait two hours for some guy to come out into the middle of goddamn nowhere, Kentucky, to uh, to help you with your car. So putting that one bottle in probably saved the whole trip. But if I had known then what I know now, I would have went to the local Walmart and I would have put like three bottles in there, and I would have been it would have been like perfect, would have been no no problem whatsoever. So yeah, that was a life lesson learned uh, on the trip, definitely. Um, also, another thing, I learned this the easy way, because it was, it was one of my dad's suggestions before I left. Keep a spare key in your wallet, because there was one point in Chicago where I almost locked the keys in the car, but I had that spare key. So, I was like, I was like, okay, well this is an inevitability I'm, 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 I'm ready for. It. And I just kind of, I just kind of gave the car a little wink, pulled the key out of my wallet, and there you go. Done. No problem. So always keep a spare key. You don't have to put it under the wheel or under the door with one of those little magnet things because I think a lot of car thieves at this point probably expect that. Um, so don't do that. But but keep it on your person. Keep it in a wallet. In a you know if you got one of the keep in, well not in a pocket. Don't keep keep it on your wallet because you always have your wallet on you. So therefore you'll always have a spare key. God forbid you need it. And uh, one thing I'm going to do next time I go on a road trip because I do plan on going back to Chicago in October. Uh, but what I'm definitely going to do there is uh, I'm definitely going to keep a whole six pack of benzene in the trunk of the car. And uh, so yeah. But anyway, enough about that. So I was I was probably going to talk about most of that the whole time going between Charleston and Baltimore. Uh, it's actually been a couple days since I got home. It's Monday. Uh, I'm not actually driving for real, so I can I can just slow down here and just look at my iPod. Yeah, June 20th, Monday, June 20th. It's actually almost 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, no, shit, sorry, I'm sorry. It's actually Tuesday, June 20th. And it's almost uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, 
Yeah, that guy back there, that's a perfect uh, representation of that SUV that almost sideswiped me when I was in Chicago. But, um, thank you for that, wherever you are. Special guest star back there. Um, but yeah. So I, uh, I've been home a couple days, did a double shift at work the day after I got back from work. I, I mean, I mean, from uh, my vacation. So what, what the hell, what a hell of a way to hop back on the horse and to do a double shift and bust my ass. I figured I might as well, because I, you know, I got today and, well, yesterday and today off. So, you know, what the hell. Um, and, uh, yeah, being on the open road really, really, really makes you think, really, really cleanses uh, the bullshit out of, your, out of your system. And, um, if you got a driver's license and a car, I recommend maybe not doing something as ambitious as I did, going to three different cities within the course of a week. No, four different cities within the course of a week. Uh, I don't, I don't really recommend doing that. Um, of course, I, because I, I didn't have hardly any time in Philadelphia. Columbus was kind of a waste of time. I, Columbus was just kind of a halfway point between East Coast and Chicago. You know, that's all Columbus was. That's all it really offered because I wasn't that impressed with it. I'm not, I wasn't really that impressed with Ohio, period. Sorry if you're from Ohio and I just pissed you off by saying that, but it, it, it's, it's okay. I might check out Cleveland next time. Um, yeah, just try it out. But I wish I would have spent more time uh, in Philly. Actually, you know, I think I'm pretty much done with Philly for now. Because, I mean, it's a pain in the ass trying to find a place to park in Philadelphia and the traffic. You know, even when I was coming into uh, in the town around 12 o'clock, Sun Falls, 12 o'clock Monday morning, I should say, it was um, it was uh, it was ridiculous. It was it was Sunday night and still there was traffic. So that's just Philly for you. It made no goddamn sense. So try to avoid the Roosevelt uh, Expressway because it's not an expressway. It's a headache. Uh, and if you got, and if you really have to, find a place to find a parking lot to park. One of those all-day parking lot type kind of places. Park there, and just you know enjoy whatever area you're in. Not that really Philadelphia has anything that I'm really looking forward to going back to anytime soon. Um, one thing's for sure about Philly is that I I, I have a I have a series of short stories that I want to write that are set in Philadelphia. And I was kind of hoping to go there and do some writing, but I ended up doing the tourist thing instead. And, uh, well, that didn't really work out the way I expected it to. Of course, a lot of the trip didn't really work out the way I expected it to. I, uh, you know, I went to Columbus. One of the reasons I was going to go to Columbus was I wanted to check out the uh, White Castle headquarters, which weren't really what I was expecting them to be. I thought it was going to be a little better than that. I also planned on getting shit-faced drunk, but um, that didn't work. I, I, I didn't have a single drink in my system the whole time I was there. But as a matter of fact, once I got to Charleston, uh, I was hoping to uh, get shit-faced drunk because there was like two bars within walking distance of the motel I was staying at. And uh, But no, they were both closed. I googled them. Uh, no, I mean I don't mean I don't mean they were closed. Like I, I got there, I got there like around 11:30. I could have I could have at least made last call. But no, they were permanently closed, as in never again going to be open for for whatever reason. I don't know why. Maybe they were like real shit kicker type kind of bars, and nobody wanted to go in them anymore. I don't know. But um, yeah, that was kind of a disappointment. But at least the, it was the night's in was the place I stayed at, and uh, the Knights Inn had some of the best damn Wi-Fi out of any of the places I had stayed at. And this was like a little mom-and-pop motel. This wasn't like a chain place like Days Inn, where I stayed in Philly, or Red Roof, where I stayed in Columbus. This was this was a mom-and-pop motel. $60 for the whole night. Like, yes, please. Please hand me the key. That sounds great. And, um... I stayed up till about two o'clock at night, just getting caught up on my social networking and and uh, you know watching Netflix. Tried to tried to cram in as much Netflix as I could because when I was in Chicago, I stayed in this little shithole flea bag motel that wasn't even in Chicago. It was in 
fucking Worth, Illinois, which was a 20-minute ride outside of Chicago. 